It is my honor to introduce to you two of the finest public servants our country has, Secretary Hillary Clinton and Senator Bernie Sanders. This is my here ready to transform America? You've come to the right place. Thanks very much for being here. I want to thank Secretary Clinton for inviting me uh, to join her here in the great state of New Hampshire. And today I am asking all of you Think big, not small. <laughs> to understand that here in the United States, we are the wealthiest nation in the history of the world. And if we are prepared to stand together and not allow people to divide us up, If we are prepared to stand up to powerful and wealthy and greedy special interests, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish, no goal that we cannot achieve, and that includes making fundamental changes in the way we fund higher education in our country. Now here is a simple truth. Forty or fifty years ago, in New Hampshire and Vermont, virtually any place in America, you went out and you got a high school degree. The odds are that you can go out and get a decent paying jobs and make it into the middle class. That was the world forty or fifty years ago. But that is not the world today. The world has changed. The global economy has changed. Technology has changed. And education has changed. Today, in a highly competitive global economy, if we are going to have as a people the kind of standard of living that the people of the United States deserve, we need to have the best educated workforce in the entire world. But let me be very honest with you and tell you that sadly that is not the case today. Our nation used to lead the world in the percentage of young Americans with college degrees. We were number one. Today, we are number 15, and that is not acceptable. And that is why Secretary Clinton and I understand that in today's world, when we talk about public education, it's no longer good enough 
to talk about the first grade through high school. That was good. That was wonderful 30 or 40 years ago. It is not enough today. And today, when we talk about public education, it must mean making public colleges and universities tuition-free for the middle class and working families of this country. Now, during the campaign, the primary campaign, Secretary Clinton had some very strong proposals. I had a different approach. But we came together after the campaign and reached an agreement that says that every family in this country earning $125,000 or less, that is 83% of our population, should be able to send their kids to public colleges and universities tuition free. And make no mistake about it, this is a revolutionary proposal for the future of our country with wide-reaching implications. It means that first, students will not be leaving college with outrageous levels of student debt. I went all over this country during the campaign and I talked to too many young people and people who were not so young, who were paying off student debts of 30, 50, a hundred thousand dollars and in some cases, it was taking them decades to pay off those debts. I want young people to leave school excited about the future. The new businesses they'll open up, getting married, having kids, buying a house, not being saddled with tens of thousands of dollars in student debt. And secondly, making public colleges and universities tuition-free does something even more profound than just reducing student debt. In my state of Vermont, here in New Hampshire and throughout this country, there are millions of low-income and working-class families with kids who don't know anybody who graduated college. Their parents didn't graduate college. My parents never went to college. And they are thinking to themselves, there is no way in God's earth that they are ever going to make it through college and into the middle class. What this proposal, Secretary Clinton's proposal, tells us is that if you are a low-income family, a working-class family, if your kid studies hard and does well, Yes, regardless of the income of your family, your kid will be able to make it into college. That is a big deal. Today, hundreds of thousands of bright and qualified young people do not get a higher education for one reason and one reason alone, their family lacks the income. That is unfair to those families. It is unfair to the future of this country. How many great scientists and engineers and teachers and police officers are out there who will never get a chance to do what they could do because of lack of income of their families? Secretary Clinton and I are going to change that if you have the ability, you will be able to get a college education. And while we are going to make public colleges and universities tuition free for the middle class and working families of this country, we are also mindful that there are millions of people out there who have already incurred deep debt and we intend 
to change that and lower those student debts as well. It makes no sense to us that when you can go get an automobile loan, refinance your home for two, three, four percent, that there are millions of people stuck with interest rates on their student debt at six, seven, eight percent. People should be able to refinance those debts at the lowest interest rates they can find. Now, some people will say, our critics will say, well, you know, it's a good idea making public colleges and universities tuition free, but it's expensive. It costs a lot of money, and the truth is, it is an expensive proposal. But I will tell you what is even more expensive, and that is doing nothing. We must invest in our young people and the future of this country. And I will tell you something else, that at a time when we have massive levels of income and wealth inequality, it is absurd, it is disgraceful for Donald Trump and his friends to be talking about hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks for the top 1%. that the overwhelming majority of the American people understand that it is far more important to invest in the future of our country than to give Donald Trump a four, and his family, Donald Trump's family, a four trillion dollar tax break if Trump were to repeal the estate tax. The Walton family, wealthiest family in America, would get a $50 billion tax break. So when you have Republicans telling us that it is okay to give tens and tens of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the richest people in this country, do not tell me that we cannot afford to make public colleges and universities tuition free. All of you know that New Hampshire is a battleground state. All of you know that this is a very tight election. And in fact, New Hampshire could decide the outcome. So I am asking you here today, not only to vote for Secretary Clinton, but to work hard to get your uncles and your aunts to get your friends to vote. If anybody tells you that this election is not important, you ask them why the Koch brothers and Sheldon Adelson and other billionaires, why they are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to elect their candidates. This election is enormously important for the future of our country. It is imperative that we elect Hillary Clinton as our next president. And with that, let me introduce the next president of the United States, Hillary Clinton.